Hey designers, my name is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your websites. If you are new here, consider subscribing. In this video, we will be taking an in-depth look into custom CSS breakpoints. Well, CSS breakpoints are really powerful and they go just beyond your elementary typical breakpoints. Well, your elementary breakpoints allow you to show or hide elements or tweak values per device. But using CSS breakpoints, which are basically your media queries, you can do literally anything that you can imagine with CSS. So maybe you can animate a section, you can hide a section, you can toggle the visibility, basically anything else that you could imagine, you can do that with your custom breakpoints. I've already taught custom breakpoints in another tutorial. I'll leave a link to that in the description. We'll be basically starting from where we left off in the previous video. So we'll be starting with the consolidated code that we put into HTML widget. It's always good to have all the page level code into one widget so that it will be easier for you to tweak and manage these values. Let's talk about default values. Now that you've added few breakpoints, you also want to add code that will be applied by default without any conditions. How do you do it? Well, it's simple. Just don't add any condition and just type in your code. So maybe if your code is this, just type it just like that. So just like that, without any conditions, whatever code you normally would type is your default code that will be applied when these breakpoint conditions are not met. And it's not a good idea to just have a code without any conditions. When you're adding breakpoints, it's always good to specify each and every scenario within the breakpoint itself. But a proper way to add default code is by adding your default code first and then add each of your breakpoint condition. So as I told you in the previous tutorial, this is the pattern that Elementor follows. So it follows max width property for these breakpoints. So when your width of your device is maximum this or less, then it will apply the properties that are specified within. And this code can be anything. It doesn't even have to be related to this section, column or anything. It can be any CSS code. It can be anything that will be applied. And here I have another breakpoint, which is your typical element of breakpoint which is specified by max width. So it means when my screen size is 600 pixels or less, then take the code within this and apply it. So let's click on update and let's see what it does to our page. So this is our page. I actually have a section heading widget. This is my HTML widget in which I'm actually typing in all the code. And in order for this to work, you might have to temporarily deactivate your WordPress security because it will blacklist the code that is within this thinking that it's actually some malware or something, but it's actually you who's changing the code anyway. So once you type all the code that you need, so let's start with max width. So once you type the code that you need, so your browser will read the code in this order. So it will read the default code and apply it first. And if there's no condition, then it'll apply the default code. And when it sees that a condition is met, when it sees that your browser's window is 900 pixels or less, then it'll apply this. And then it'll look for the next condition, which is your 600 pixel condition. So when your browser window is 600 pixels or less, then it'll apply this code right here. Anyway, let's see what I'm talking about. So here I said that I want my default background color to be tan, which is what you see in here. Let's try to scale down my browser. This is actually a 1280 by 720p resolution screen in which I'm showing you the demo. If you have a bigger screen, well, it may vary based on the resolution supported by your laptop browser or any other device. Anyway, let's scale down our browser or let's reduce the width of our browser. 
watch as I gradually scale down the background color reaches or turns into blue at some point so we have specified that when background width or when the width of the device is 900 pixels change the background color to blue that's what it's doing in here and we also said when width is 600 pixels or less then change the background color back to olive so let's scale it down even a bit further and there you have it as I scale down my window to 600 pixels or less you can see the transition you can see the background color being changed to olive instead of blue and when I actually scale it back to the default size or the actual size you can see the default code being applied in here so it stands so that's what we see here we are mainly focused on four main properties they are max width min width max height and min height and they basically take the height or width of the browser window that you are viewing the website now that we've seen max width property let's follow the same pattern in which we have the default code first and then instead of max width let me give min width and let me change values here based on the res resolution that i have so for 400 pixels or above i'll have this for 700 pixels or above i'll have this min width is quite opposite of max width as the name suggests while max width works while you scale down your browser window min width works in the opposite direction so when the width of the device or the browser window is 700 pixels or more when you say max width it's that particular value or less and when you say min width it will be that particular value or more it's that simple so it applies when you're scaling up min width and max width will be applied when you scale down the browser window let's go ahead and test it out with our browser window and as you can see here when i have the minimum width which is 400 pixels you can see my background color i've set it to olive so when i scale this to 400 pixels or less just like a mobile device you can see the background color of the page is olive and above this this will be the color and when the width reaches 700 pixels or more i said my background color should be white so let's scale up the browser window it didn't reach that 700 pixels width which is why it's basically applying the default code so as i told you when there's no condition met it will take the default code and apply it so it di still didn't reach the 700 pixel breakpoint or the min width condition that is set in here so it's actually applying the default code because it doesn't have any other code to apply let me scale it down even a bit and once the width of the browser window reaches 700 pixels it will take this code and apply it it's as simple as that and if you want another breakpoint while scaling up just add another breakpoint with min width property and change the value to whatever you like based on the resolution of devices but the typical breakpoints are around 700 pixels 300 pixels 400 pixels so just like min width or max width i also told that you have max height it works in the vertical direction so it's your resolution along y-axis so the code that i've set here is for max height so when you scale down the browser these breakpoints will work just like any other breakpoints and the default background color when in condition is not met is tan anyway let's check it out let's scale it and at this particular breakpoint which is 600 pixels the background color is changed to olive let me scale down my browser window 
or let me reduce the height of it and at some particular point it will change the background color to tan that's because this particular code is not yet met so when the height reaches 400 pixels and below this will be the code that will be applied anyway let's scale down our browser window actually let's take this one and scale it down and as you can see when the width reaches 400 pixels or less the max width property kicks in and it will apply the code within this which is actually our blue background so at 400 pixels height or below you will just have blue background at 600 pixels height or below you will have your olive background and when there is an ambiguity when there is no proper condition it will take the default code and apply that so it will apply the background tan when there is no proper condition specified so when the width or when the height reaches 400 pixels or less it will turn the background color to blue it's that simple so max height will work similar to max width min height works similar to min width and that is when you scale your browser window up so let's play with the values let's reduce the height and you can see at a default value my background color is set to tan which is what I see in here so when the height when there's no condition met it will take the default code and apply that I told you that let's scale it up and at some point which is 400 pixels it will change my background color to blue which is what it's doing in here at 400 pixels the resolution of the display that I'm using is 900 pixels along y-axis or vertically so I won't be able to show you any resolution above 900 pixels if you have a high resolution monitor you can maybe have a thousand pixels min height and then test it out but if you have a typical HD display which is 920 by 1080p then you can test out breakpoints vertically up to 980 sorry 1080 pixels so this actually takes the resolution of the display that you're viewing so anyway don't get into too specific of this just bear in mind that min height will work while you scale up and max height will work while you scale down from that value so when the height is 600 pixels or more this will be the background color and when the height is 400 pixels or more this will be the background color and when there is no proper condition met in case of ambiguity it will just set my background color to tan or the default value to tan so let's see that let me scale it down along y axis or vertically and you can see my background color is now tan and scroll through the element I can show you let me scale my as I told you min height works when you scale up so let me scale my browser window vertically so at some particular point it's blue and at some particular height which is 700, sorry 600 pixels it's olive so it's that simple min width max width min height and max height you'll mostly be using width because you're not really bothered about the vertical height you basically work with the width which is why Elementor gave the width as a breakpoint anyway as I've told you these breakpoints are really powerful than Elementor breakpoints Elementor will allow you to tweak your values but with these breakpoints you can basically add any CSS code you can add animations transitions you can hide elements, you can show elements, you can apply filters, basically anything if you know CSS and you can watch a lot of videos on the channel and you can play with various things within these breakpoints. Okay, we now learned about min width, 
max width, min height and max height. You can also add set of queries to specify a range in which your code should work. So you can have something like and min width as 400 pixels and max width as 500 pixels. And when you combine these condition, it means when the width of the device lies between 400 and 500 pixels, this will be the code that will be applied. And when min width is 600 pixels and when max width is 800 pixels, which means when the width of the device rests between these values, then this is the code that will be applied. Let's check it out. Let me stretch it. It's tan color, which is basically the color that we specified. Let's scale it down. And you can see the olive color. And finally, you can see the tan color. And then it turns to blue when the width reaches 500 to 400 pixels. So within this range, the background color will be blue. You can also do the same thing with max height and min height. And within those heights, this particular code will be applied. You can also mix and match any query. So you can have min width and max height or max width and min height. But it's better to include multiple queries with same properties. So just limit yourself to min width and max width and then apply any code that you would like to. And it will basically give a range in which these devices should work or the code for the particular breakpoints should work. Finally, the last media query property that I want to discuss is orientation. So when the orientation is in landscape, when you mention this property, it means when the width of the screen is greater than height of the screen. That's when you read your e-readers or mobile devices in landscape mode. When you do that, this will be the code that will be applied. And when the height of the screen is actually greater than the width of the screen, as it is with most mobile devices such as iPhone 10, Galaxy and a lot more. This will be the device. This will be the code that will be applied to that particular device. Let's check it out. So I just said in orientation landscape, which means when width is greater than height, the background color should be olive. And when orientation is portrait, which means when the width is less than the height, then the background color should be blue. Let me scale it down. As of now, it looks like a landscape orientation because width of my browser window is actually more than the height. Let me scale it down. And let's see in the new page. And as you can see, this now looks like a mobile device. And here, width of my de device or the width of my screen is actually less than the height of the screen. So in portrait, it just changed to background color blue. Let me scale it. And when width of the device is actually more than the height of the device, well, simply it will turn to olive background. So let me scale it down. And you can clearly see that in portrait, I'll have a blue background and in landscape orientation, which means when the width of the device is more than the height, I'll just have this. So it's quite easy to build a lot of custom controls into your website just by using media queries and using custom breakpoints with Elementor. Elementor already has a ton of tools and with these, your design skills will be unlimited. Hope this video helped you. There's more exciting content coming soon. Stay tuned. And that's it for now and hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you need anything else, don't hesitate to ask. I'm ready to help you. Catch you in the next video. Peace.